Recording in progress. <laughs> All right, I'm recording starting now um, for you guys for your homework because today we're not sewing together. Today uh, we're just going to be watching. I'm going to show you how to cut out the pattern. It'll be a review for many of you because we already did this in a uh, in the top, the summer top class. And some of you may have taken other classes with me. Um, and then after we cut out the shorts, then I'm gonna show you the first couple of steps today, uh, which is putting in the pocket. And then you guys are gonna have homework. You'll pick up your kit this week with the pattern and the elastic, and you'll um, cut out your pattern at home. And Hopefully you can start sewing in your pocket as well. So this is my fabric. And um, next week, or not next week, but the next time we meet, uh, we will sew together. So we can finish the last steps and we'll finish the shorts. So ne the next meeting we'll sew together. This meeting you guys are watching. I'm recording it so that I can email it to you guys. Um, you can watch the recording while you're doing your homework. So there's two patterns. There's also pockets as well. I almost forgot the pocket pattern. Um, I'm gonna get those in a minute, but let's first do the front and the back. So there's two patterns front and back, and they'll be labeled. Patterns always are labeled with what it is, pajama short or summer top, or, you know, um, collar, uh, sleeve. It'll tell you, it'll tell you what part, what it is. Um, and it'll tell you whether it's a dress or, um, you know, what the a skirt. And then it'll also tell you the part. So this is the back. And it'll tell you, I know this is backwards, <laughs> the size, and it'll say cut two or cut one. So these are cut two. That means you fold the fabric. So you're cutting two layers. You always cut right, you fold your fabric right sides together, always. So the, this is my right side, folding it together. I'm using this um, slippery silk, so it's silk charmeuse. So um, I don't, recommend, I think you guys should just use the cotton shirting, you know, your typical like boxer short material. Um, this is just what I happen to have. And you'll always clip into your selvage edge. It releases, it relaxes the fabric so it lays flat. If you don't trim it, it can affect this, the fit of your garment. So I've already done that and I folded it right sides together. And now I'm gonna lay my back piece um, I forgot to draw in my um, grain line <laughs> when I was making the pattern this morning. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it in. I know the grain line is on this um, line in the pattern because I was using it when I made it. So a grain line is this long line that you see on the pattern. It tells you what, which direction to place your pattern on the fabric. So this is my selvage edge, which is my length grain, and that should be parallel to my grain line. So I don't wanna lay my fabric, my pattern like this. I don't wanna lay it like this or like that. I want this grain line to be perfectly parallel to my selvage edge. So, if it's a pattern like pajama pants that are long, I would actually use my ruler and I would measure the distance to make sure it was the same all the way across. But since this is just shorts, I'm not gonna be that picky. Um, I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna, I don't wanna waste, I think I can fit one of my pockets right up here. So that's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna make sure I leave enough room for my pocket there. I'm gonna go get the pocket pattern right now. Okay. 
Hopefully it'll fit. You have to cut four, um, four pockets. So this is two, and then I'm gonna cut it again um, when I cut out my front. Raj is joining us. <laughs> I'm not gonna re-explain everything. <laughs> uh, we'll run it, we're not gonna have enough time. So I'm gonna be able to fit my pocket in. Hi Raj, welcome. Right there. So I have two separate um, pieces of fabric. One, this one is like 25 inches long and I have another one that's the same. You guys are probably gonna have one long piece of fabric and you're gonna lay all your pieces out together. I'm just doing this to make it easier for me to show you guys. So you can use pins or if you have fabric weights, you can use fabric weights. And I'm just gonna cut right along the edge of my pattern. Cut it right out. So there are some notches on this pattern. And I'm gonna mark those after I finish cutting. So I don't see any sizes from you guys. Did you guys send me, is it just because my chats, I'm not seeing it or? Sorry, I'll send it. You want it in the chat? Um, yeah, cause I was just gonna quickly write it down on my notes when you guys sent it. Um, is it possible for me to do it like at, like a little after lunchtime, just cause I'm waiting for my daughter to come home so I can figure out the right length. I know it's gonna be a small. Okay. So I don't think chat's working. Why don't you guys email me? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask if I can just email you. Let's it. let's just do the email. Let's let's keep it one simple thing for everyone because it, it doesn't look like it's working. So um, please. Oh, I got it from Melissa. Um, and Pauline. Okay, everyone else, just email it to me because if you need more time, I don't want you to feel rushed. Okay, so let me quickly get this cut out. So definitely try to create a surface for yourself. I know a lot of people think, oh, I'm just gonna lay it on the floor. If you have a hardwood floor, um, you might be able to get away with it, but don't do it on carpet. It's kind of hard. It might not be that accurate. Try to give yourself the dining room table or the kitchen table. Um, it's just going to be a lot easier and come out a lot better. So here on the pattern, um, there's notches right here. I guess you can't see them that well. These are the notches. So when there's two little notches like that, that means back, all right? That's the, this pattern is for the back. And that's very important because the front and the back pieces aren't the same, they're different. Okay, so when you have two notches like that, you clip into them with your scissors, just a little quarter inch snip, quarter inch, because we're gonna do a half inch seam allowance. So when we sew our seam allowance, you won't see those quarter inch nips. So it's just a little quarter inch knit. That's how I do my notches. I know other people 
those patterns that you get at the um, at the Joanne's, the McCall's, the simplicity, they're not just like go out. Um, but we're gonna do it like this, it's faster, it's quicker. So I had two more notches here that I clip. And then um, my waistband is an inch and a half. It's a fold over waistband and I have that marked on my pattern, but I'm not gonna notch that. You don't wanna notch that, you don't need to. Um, I do have a little notch for my pockets. I just, I like to have that there. That's where I want my pockets to start. Um, you guys can actually put your pockets as far down or, or you can't put them all the way down. <laughs> you, they have to be somewhere that makes sense. So the pocket is, the opening to the pocket is uh, seven inches. So you need to be able to fit that seven inch pocket. You can't have your pocket way down here. <laughs> so, but if you don't want yours to start two inches from the waist, that's where I have mine starting. You know, you want it lower, you can, it's up to you. So I have mine starting right there. Good question about the notches, Amy. Um they have that line there so you don't when you notch it you don't really cut the whole line you just kind of snip like a quarter inch right yeah that's a good question carol don't snip that line isn't a cut line you don't want to cut all the way through the um to that line you'll cut through your garment it's you it's just a um it's just a guide and it's you only want to do a quarter inch because you're going to sew a half inch seam allowance and you don't want to cut beyond that half inch. You just want a little teeny quarter inch notch. The long big notch on the pattern is not a cut line. It's just there to show you where the notches go. So you're not cutting that much. Okay. It's just showing you where to go. And then that double line that you just showed that you said that was the back pattern, right? You, uh, I, you cut both of them you put, cut both of yeah them. on the back it'll show you there's two notches here so snip two one two and that okay. means that means so when you're actually working with this piece of fabric you'll know it's the back because you can look at the two notches right here otherwise sometimes i pin um i pin a label on it that says back <laughs> just so i don't get them mixed up but um, this has a double notch on it. So then we, that's how we can know. Sometimes it's hard to tell the front from the back. And with the type of fabric, I don't know if you're gonna talk about fabric later. Um, is it better to use that type of knit where it's like a softer, like a false um, easier or is it, or if I use like a quilting type of cotton that we've been using before, you want to use a knit? No, don't use a knit. But I should use some sort of softer fabric. Because I noticed like I did that shirt for, um, you know, using regular cotton and it's such a stiff material. It doesn't drape very well, you know? Oh, um, we'll find a cotton that is a little more uh, drapey, but I wouldn't do, I mean, if you want to go, I'm not going to teach it as a knit though. Because if we do a knit, then you know, you, you're supposed to, you have to change the setting on your sewing machine and you have to, you know, it's a little different animal and I'm not gonna teach it that way. Okay, oh, I didn't realize it was different, okay. Got yeah, it. sewing knits is, is a whole different ball game um, than wovens. Even when you go to design school, if you can major in knits and it's a whole different program learning how to do knits learning how to sew them and does design them and sweater knits and cut and sew knits, you know, cause there's cut and sew knits that you buy on the bolt. And then there's sweater knits that are knitted on the machine. Those like the crochet and um, yeah. So it's a whole different ball game and you have to sew them differently. So, but I mean, we cheat all the time. I might cheat. <laughs> and not use the stretch stitch or whatnot, depending, but in general, it's a different um, ball game. And I'm not, gonna, um, I'm not gonna teach it that way, the class. So, but you can find wovens that are drapey. Um, I, this fabric that I used is really drapey. Just 
go when you go to the store, feel everything, you know. Carol, feel feel around. <laughs> to find something that has rayon in it if, if you don't if you want that drapiness you're looking for rayon rayon or polyester yeah. don't get just straight cotton get um a blend you know what i mean Hey, Amy, this is Lindsay. I had a, just a general question because when I go in the store, I see the section that's for quilters cotton and then I see like a broadcloth cotton. Um, is that different from just a regular cotton? Yeah, don't, for this project, don't get quilters cotton. Is that just a thicker, tighter kind of thing, or? I think the broadcloth is a is a thicker. Oh, I, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, if I was holding them and touching them, I could tell you. But I think broadcloth to me, broadcloth is to to me is thicker and more um, densely woven. I'm not positive. <laughs> then quilters cotton. I think quilters cotton's like thinner. So, but what type of material is the one that you're cutting? It's silk charmeuse. It's actually 100% silk and it's called charmeuse. So the fiber content is silk, like cotton or polyester. Um, and then the, wo the woven, the style that it's woven in is called charmeuse. So broadcloth is a style of how something's woven in. Um, linen, Linen refers to the fiber, but then there's there's flannel. Flannel refers to the way it's woven, the way it's the style of it. So cotton flannel, cotton broad canvas, cotton canvas, there's silk charmeuse, there's silk chiffon, there's silk satin. So um, this is charmeuse, charmeuse is smooth like satin it's it feels like satin and it's shiny it's very shiny um and then it's on the back it's matte it's matte and you know it's dull so that's charmeuse and it's so it's th it's not sheer that's why i like it that's why i used it a lot because i could make a, a beautiful top that wasn't sheer for my customers because no I, I mean i don't like having a sheer top because then you have to wear a tank top underneath or whatever and it's just it's you know if I spend a lot of money on something I want it to be nice so that's why I like the charmeuse because it's not sheer but it has that um silky satin and I like the shininess of it and this one you sew it like a, a like a cotton not like a knit so it'd be okay to get this type of material for this yeah type. it's not it's not um a knit, this is a woven fabric. So okay. it has a stripe in it. I mean, it's more of a, what is this called? <laughs> I'm losing it. It's kind of like-, like tie dye or? Yeah, it looks like a tie dye. It has a name, um, but I call it the splash print, <laughs> but um, it is a stripe. So I wanna make sure that I'm cutting the same um, direction on the front and the back. <laughs> so they don't look completely crazy. So I think I have that going the right direction. And I'm gonna make sure I'm just laying out my front on the piece. I wanna make sure my grain line is parallel to my selvage edge. And I clipped into the selvage edge. And I want some room for my pocket. So I'm gonna move it. I'm moving it this way. So I have this space to cut out my pocket. So now that I had to move my pattern further, gosh, I gotta make sure that these patterns match up. So I'm laying my front here. 
Here we go. Okay. So if you get a directional print, you need to be aware of that, like I'm doing. If it has um, a pattern that's going a certain way or stripes that need to meet. So that looks parallel. And then do I have enough room for my pocket? I need to move this down more. Barely enough room for the pocket. Yeah, so Carol, definitely, if you want more of that drapiness, then make sure it has some rayon in it, you know, feel it and play with it a little and um, ask what the content is or look on the bolt, it should tell you. And see if it has viscose or rayon or um, polyester, then it'll have more of that um, drapiness to it. I guess the biggest problem with this because it has that stretch, right? So when you sew it, it kind of throws off the sewing or? Um, yeah, I mean, you can't use just a regular straight stitch on your sewing machine because when you stretch the fabric, it'll break the stitches. And I'm actually planning to do a leggings class for August. Ooh. Is what? That's awesome. Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> We need some leggings in our lives. That'd be awesome. So it's actually, you're going to bring your leggings to class. I'm going to show you how to make a pattern from your leggings. And then you're going to sew a new pair of pattern, a new pair of leggings. So you're going to take an existing pair of leggings that you like that fit you. And then I'll show you how to make a pattern from it. And then you'll sew it. So we'll be doing knits in that class. And we'll, I'll show you how to sew knits and we'll talk about that. Um, but for this one, if you get knits, Carol, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I won't be able to help you. No, it's totally fine. I'm honestly very confused with fabric. So in my mind, there's only cotton and knit and that's it. <laughs> so well, I was just thinking something drapey, but if there's other materials that kind of, you know, that I can use that's, um, you know, not quite so stiff. Well, Carol, the regular cottons that I get. I need to have a fabric class for you because <laughs> I would like to take that class too. I think we should take a field trip to the store. <laughs> yes. And, and normally we do when I teach like a, you know, a class in a school kind of setting. But um, so Carol, you need to get it straight. There's, it's, there's cot, there's knits and there's wovens. There's just two types of fabrics, knits and wovens. And knits are knitted with one continuous thread on a knitting machine. And wovens are woven with two threads. There's a warp and a weft. So if you imagine a weaving machine, there's two threads. One's going this way, in and out, in and out, and this one's going this way, right? So that, those are woven fabrics. And there's just two types of fabrics, wovens, knits, and they're um, different from each other and they're sewn differently. And then within the category of knits, there's different types of fiber. So cotton knit, you know, a wool knit, <laughs> you, know, um, it, you know, rayon, I'm just, doing my notches right now. Um, this is the front. So there's only one notch. So I see there's only one notch and I'm only clipping just a quarter inch, just a little snip so that it's hidden when I sew the seam allowance. So that's it on the front. And then, so let's just talk about wovens then. So wovens um, come in all different fibers. So cotton, wool, linen, 
there's all the synthetic fibers as well, like polyester and um, viscose, I think is actually a natural fiber. Hemp, now, now there's hemp. So you can have a cotton knit or you can have a cotton woven. Does that help at all? <laughs> yes, thank you. So when we were talking about cotton or wool or linen or polyester or silk, that's the fiber, that's the thread, the, the thread that the fabric's made out of. So if it's cotton, it's cotton threads that are warped, that are woven. If it's silk, it's silk threads. If it's wool, it's wool threads. If it's linen, it's um, linen threads. If it's a, a knit, then it's a knit, it's a cotton thread that's making the knit. I hope that helps. <laughs> it's easier when I actually have swatches and handouts and stuff, and I could teach a fabric class, but I don't know if they would, I don't know. Do you guys want a fabric class? Textile class? <laughs> I, I find that that's really difficult for me because I end up going to the store and I'm like, oh, look. And, and then I kind of stand in the, <laughs> in the middle of the hour going like, well, which, which one? So I, I would appreciate it, but I don't, you know, that's just, I'm a very small person. But I am always confused by that type of thing. Yeah, same here. Yeah, it would probably be more, it would be more, ben it would be better to actually be able to go to the store though. You can make a field trip out of it. <laughs> Yeah, I have to, um, when we get back to in-person. And plus, um, you need to be able to feel the swatches, you know, and touch them and look at them. So doing it on a video might be hard. Okay, so that's it for the fabric. Um, Just had to get my chair. So now I'm going to actually try um, something different and position my camera at my sewing machine. And so I'm gonna move things around a little bit, but I have my two fronts, two backs, and I have four pockets. So two sets of two, because you're gonna have one on each side. You know, how do you keep, do you have a good system of keeping track of your pieces? Because, you know, sometimes I cut them and if I don't sew it right away, I'm like, what did I, what is this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, in fact, um, I told you about the notches um, to be able to distinguish front from back, but I'm actually going to use my little labels <laughs> um, because once I sew the side seam, I'm not going to be able to see these notches anyway. So um, I like having these on so I know which is front and back. Sometimes I'll use my chalk and I'll write it on the wrong side of the fabric. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, I um, really, this is the only thing that I have trouble keeping track of is like the front and the back on this pattern because it's hard to tell the difference. And I don't want to have to like stare at it and look at it and try to figure out is that the front or the back. So I just label it like, like this. I pin it on. <laughs> so, but that's the only thing. The the pockets, you know, it's pretty easy to tell that they're the pockets because they're this unique shape. And it's important to keep these two pieces together because this is this is a group. You don't want to mess. You don't want to take these two pieces apart and mix them up. So I cut these two out together and you want to keep them together. If you have trouble keeping them together, put a pin in them, Carol. You know, go like pin it like this so that they don't come apart. But um, I'd usually just keep them just on top of each other. I don't mess with them a lot. I don't move them around a lot. Um, I have my own space in here, so I'm lucky. Um, if you guys are at home and there's people and kids in your space and you have to move your space, then you might want to pin these. And then I just keep them together like this and 
you know, I fold it and I'll just lay it on top of the pattern. So I just lay it on top of the pattern and keep everything like that. Um, right now we're gonna actually start painting the front and the back. So that's our first step. After you cut it out, you're gonna take one front and one back and you're gonna pin them together. And you're gonna do the same with the other front and the other back. So I'm gonna show you one, one side. I don't know if I'll have time to show you both, but it's the same thing, exact same step. So, it, I mean, if I show you both, you're just gonna watch me do it again, which, which could be nice, <laughs> but I'm not sure if we're gonna have time. So this is your first step after cutting, you're gonna put, one front and one back together, right sides together. So I'm going to demo one right now. I'm putting my other one to the side. So right sides together. The first thing I'm going to do is, so it's one back and one front. It's not two fronts. So a lot of people make that mistake. They sew their two fronts together. You take one back and one front. Okay, and I'm going to pin the side seam. So we're starting with the side seam. It's really important to get this down. I was watching a video the other day of someone on YouTube doing a sewing tutorial and they didn't say anything with the proper terminology. So it's kind of hard to understand what's what. So this is the side seam and this is the inseam. The inseam is where your, cro in, where your crotch is in between your legs. So when I'm talking, I'll be talking about the inseam, the side seam, and this is the, the crotch, the curve down the center front. And this is the waist, and this is the hem. So we're starting with the side seam, and just like we always do, we're pinning right sides together, and I always match my top corner, my top corners and my bottom corners first. So I, I get my top corner and then I match my bottom corner. This is kind of just a habit I've gotten into. It works pretty well because there's ease. Again, like we had ease on the summer top. Um, there's ease in this pattern as well because of the hip. There's not a lot because it's the baggy loose fit, but there is a little bit of ease. And because we have the pocket in here too now, there's a lot going on. So, um, I wanna make sure that this matches. If there's too much ease, I'll just adjust it like we did on the summer top I showed you. So what I like to do is just go ahead and pin the whole side seam first. And then I take out the pins where I want my pocket to be. Cause we don't wanna sew that hole. We wanna leave an opening for the pocket. Um, I finish my seams at home on the serger. Um, you guys are gonna use pinking shears. If you wanna use a stitch on your sewing machine um, that you like to kind of like finish the two seams together, that's fine with me, but I'm gonna teach it with pinking shears. And that's the other thing with knits, Carol, you, the, um, you finish the uh, seams differently too. Well, I think after the other class, I didn't realize I actually have like a serger foot or whatever that's called. Oh, cool. That helps. Um, I mean, it doesn't, I, I don't know how to use it because I try to use it and it kind of ate it up a little bit, but <laughs> it's there. I can practice on it. Maybe it, it, um, I can use it as a serger. <laughs> so again, I'm going to there's a little bit of ease right here. It's bubbling up and, um, you know, we don't need it <laughs> because this short isn't fitted. So I left it in on my sample. And when I was sewing my pocket, um, it got a little bubbly in places. So I'm just gonna let it go to the end. I'm not gonna try to force it in. So if you guys, end up having this little bit of ease right here on the side seam, just go ahead and let and let it out and let it go to the hem.
So would it be better to like pin it like just from one end to the next um, instead of doing the ends first or? Um, yeah, I guess you can. So there's a, it's not matching now. So normally I pin the two corners cause I need to keep the ease in here. I don't want to lose that. I don't want it to come to the end here. So, um, but yeah, since we're just letting it out, um, that would be okay. There's still a little bit of ease in here. So you don't wanna have a lot hanging off the edge. It's like barely a quarter inch there that I let come to the edge. All right, so pocket. Um, I need to figure out where my opening is gonna be. So this is up to you, how you want your pocket to lay, if you want it to lay this way or you want it to lay that way. Um, I like it laying like this angled. It's more of an angle down. It's very um, slight. You can barely tell the difference, but it's a slight difference in angle. And um, I'm just gonna measure it again. I think it's seven inches. Yeah. So I need to leave a, se a seven inch opening. Now I can put my pocket away. I don't need it. I just needed to know my opening. So this waist has an inch and a half fold. So this inch and a half up here is gonna get folded over for the elastic, right? So I'm going to measure an inch and a half down. And then from there, that's where I'm gonna measure where I want my pocket to start. So, I'm going to have it start let's see, three inches down. So from the top of the garment, it's four and a half inches. So if you want to write that down or just, I guess you'll have the recording. So if you want to measure from the top of the waistband down to where the pocket starts, four and a half inches. And you can mark that with chalk. I marked it on my, I won't, you know, maybe I won't put it on your pattern because it'll just be confusing. Um, you guys will need to mark that yourself, four and a half, and then check it because everyone's different where they want their hands to go in their pocket and how big your hands are. So check it and just figure it out how, oh, I don't like it that, that far. That's three inches from, from where the top of my waist is. I want it four inches. So does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so now I have where my pocket's gonna start. Just remember there's an inch and a half waistband. So this isn't the top of your waist. Your waist starts an inch and a half below. All right, seven inches. All right, so now I'm just gonna mark it here. I'm marking both sides of the fabric. I like to mark both sides of the fabric because I don't know which side I'm actually gonna end up sewing on. Okay, so that's my opening. I'm gonna take my pins out. I mean, you could leave them in, doesn't really matter. <laughs> And now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew from here to here and then here to here. So from here to here and then here to here. And then I'm going to finish my seam and then I'm going to prep my pocket.
and I thought I might try positioning my camera somewhere different for you guys. So we'll see. I'm um, changing my thread color. Yeah, I'll have to think about the field trip. Um, that's a really great idea. I'm not sure if the library would let me do that go to Joanne's and walk around the store and show you guys, and you guys could ask questions and talk about the fabrics. It's more fun even in the garment district um, too. I can take you to my favorite places. How's parking when you go to the garment district? That's the only thing I always worry about. It's like, where do you park? Um, you have to find your like favorite little parking structure, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I do. <laughs> you know, I had my my parking structure that I always went to, and I just paid. You know, it was like probably five bucks back then or six bucks. And um, I would just go to that same structure. I had my like stores in that vicinity that I went to. Um, this It's still there, the same place where I used to park and it was safe and I like, you know, it was perfect. So you just, that's, you just have to find the right parking structure in the vicinity of all the stores you're going to. So you don't like have to, you just hit all the stores from that one central location. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just grab, you just have to plan, I'm going to pay eight bucks or whatever it is and factor that in to the day. So I'm just sewing a half inch, um, ah, I'm trying to get it so you guys can see, <laughs> half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to stop where I marked my knot where my pocket starts. It's a half inch seam allowance or a quarter inch seam allowance? Half inch. I'm back stitching where my pocket starts, half inch seam allowance. So I have to stop because I wanna leave that opening. I'm cutting all my threads. And now I'm going to where my pocket ends. And I'm going to start again. I've got a pin in the way. I'm always back stitching at the beginning and the end of a stitch line. Huh. My uh, um, red, I'm having a little technical difficulty. Broke. Speaking of the garment district, I need to go to the garment district and get my sewing machine fixed because 
this sewing machine that I'm using, I don't like <laughs> at all. Because I keep having all these problems with you guys when I'm sewing. So I'm just starting over and going over the line where my uh, machine malfunctions. And now I'm trimming off my threads. And then the next step is to iron. So you wanna press your seams open. So if I can just turn the camera, that worked. And I'm gonna press the seams open. So after you press the seams open, then you'll want to finish them. So um, I'll use the pinking shears. I'll show you that technique. If you have a serger or access to one, use the serger. You'll search each seam individually. You don't want to close the seam. You need to leave the seam open. So that's very important. You have to leave the seam open so that we can set in the sleeve. And while I'm pressing this, I'm pressing the um, pocket seam allowance open as well, because that's going to be your guide. So I hope you can see that. Can you see that, Carol? So see how I press this open, this seam too? You want to do that. That's really important. Make sure you get a half inch. I did mine really fast. And I'm going to fix it because it's not really a full half inch. So this is just one style of pocket since it's an inset pocket. You know, there's patch pockets, there's other types of pockets. Um, and so I can't, I can't, um, pink these guys together. You know, normally we would just iron them together and then pink them together for speed, but I can't do that because I have to leave them open for my pocket. So you have to take the time to pink each edge um, separately, okay? And be I can remember why I had issues with trying to search. Um, Cause if I try to search just one piece of fabric, like it was so thin, it kind of, it was almost too much thread for it. Do you find that that's an issue with trying to search? Well, you always have to change the tension, you know, technically whenever you change the fabric, you know, you have to, you have to adjust the tension. So when you switch to just one layer of fabric, that's like changing that's changing the um that changes that affects the tension so do you go higher or lower if, if it's you thinner you go higher you want to go tighter okay if it's a thinner fabric or less layers oh so this is um nerve-wracking because when you're just painting one layer you don't want to um cut the body of your fabric right? So it's really tricky. 
And when you're cutting that, you don't want to cut this. You don't want to cut your body layer right here. And I'm just making this really simple. We're not going to get complicated with finishing the scene because they're just pajama shorts. You know, it's going to be fine. This, I want, it's better to just get it done. And this is nice enough. On the other scenes, you can pink them closed. It's just this side seam where um, you have to leave it open. Okay, so I got that pinked. Messy, messy. Um, so I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to press it one more time so that it's ready to go to pin and sew the top of the pin. Make sure that's ready to go. So it's nice and flat and smooth. If you have a little um, overage right here at the end from that. Um, from the ease that came down. Now is a good time to trim that off. I'm just gonna use my pinking shears for the time. I'm just trimming it off into zero onto the rest of the garment. So now I'll set that aside and grab my pocket. So since I have my pinking shears out, I'm gonna go ahead and pink this edge of my pocket, this straight edge. So do you see how the pockets curve like your hand in the shape of a hand? And then there's a straight edge. I'm gonna pink that because we need that to be finished. And I'm pinking them both together. I think I will put a pin. So both layers are together at the same time, right sides together. They should be perfectly the same. And I'm just taking off the edge. I don't want to take off, you know, a lot. I'm just literally painting the edge. You don't want to lose any fabric. So that's done. Now I'm going to sew um, the pocket. So we're prepping the pocket. I'm gonna put pins around the edge. I wanna leave this half inch, a half inch from this edge here open. I'm not gonna sew all the way to the edge. I'm leaving that open so that I can attach it to the pants. And I'm matching all my edges and I'm gonna pin all the way around the pocket. I'm pinning. See if I can get this collar. I'm going to pin all the way around this pocket here, like that. And we're going to sew it. So if you're using cotton, fabric and it doesn't slip or move, you might not need to pin it that much, just in a couple of places. But I'm using the silk charmeuse, which is slippery. So I need to use more pins. So Carol, you were saying, hey, I want to get that kind of fabric. The only thing with this kind of fabric is it's slippery. So it moves a lot. It's harder to sew. So um, it's a more advanced fabric to work with. So you have to um, put a lot of pins in it and be able to control it really well because it slips on you in the sewing machine. It moves around a lot. <laughs> this one isn't that bad, but other silky fabrics can be really tough to sew. 
So again, this edge right here, as you can see. So here's my straight edge. I'm only going to sew up to this point because I want to leave a half inch from the edge down a half inch. I want to leave that open on both sides, a half inch right here. So I'm at the sewing machine now. And I'm gonna sew all the way around the pocket. But again, I'm leaving that half inch. I'm starting a half inch from this edge at the top that I just paint. If you don't leave that open, then you won't have anything to attach to the pants or the shorts. I'm doing a half inch seam allowance. Everything's the same, so we don't get confused. I guess this sewing machine doesn't like the fabric or the thread or something. So the pocket is, is a pretty good sized curve. Um, it's fairly shapely, so it is a little bit tough to sew it. So you just have to keep turning the fabric. If you need to stop and pivot, you can. So now I'm going to stop a half inch away from the end. So I'm not going to sew all the way to the end. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and um, press the seams open. Just that top seam, the straight seam. Not, I'm not going to press the curve. So I'm going to give the whole thing a nice press. And while it's nice and flat, I'm going to pink. You know what, Carol, I forgot to um, spotlight myself <laughs> through the video. Now I'm spotlighted. Um, I'm going to pink this edge. I'm just taking off a little teeny bit, I'm doing both seam allowances together. Now I'm going to press this open right here. So how I do that is I just lay it flat and I open up one side and then I iron it 
like that with my uh, iron. And then I turn it over and I fold that side down. And then I fold this side back. So it's like kind of like that. So now I have that ironed and I have a guide and I can go back to my pants and I can um, pin it in. So you take your pants and you take your pocket. And again, you want to look at how you're gonna, the angle. Oops, this way, in the top. So I want it angling down. So I'm just checking my angle. Yeah, it's this way, I want it this way. And then I hold my pants up to me. So I have it labeled with the back and the front. So I literally hold it up to myself like this. This is my front leg and my back leg. And here's my pocket opening. And I take my pocket and I hold it up to me and I make sure I have the right angle. This is the angle. And I put my hand in the pocket and I put my pocket in like that. I just stick my hand in like that. And then I put the side seams I kind of lay them on top of each other and I turn it inside out. I turn it inside out and I'm still holding it like this. And I grab the two seam allowances and I match them together. So the pocket seam allowance is on this side and the short seam allowance is on this side. And I wanna hold it back so you can see. So you can see the shorts are inside out and I have oops, inside. The pocket is inside the opening and I'm holding the seam allowance against, it's hard to show you guys on the video, I hope you're getting it. <laughs> against the seam allowance on the pants. So see my opening, these are the pants and there's that, this is where the opening starts. And you take the pocket opening and you match it right on top of each other like that. You mash them on top of each other. And I, I hold these two seam allowances right sides together, together like that, and I start pinning. So the right side of the pocket is facing the right side of the short? Yeah, or? yes. So the- yeah. Oh, why is my pocket so? Okay, my opening's bigger than my pocket. Let me see what happened here. All right, you guys, I need to make it smaller. Well, that's easy to do. So for some reason, I guess I measured incorrectly or I don't know, um, my pocket opening on my shorts is bigger than my pocket, but that's no big deal. I can easily just go back to the machine and um, stitch it up. So I'm gonna do that for you right now. I just marked, I had like an inch too big, sorry. Let me quickly fix that.
So matching the pocket to the pant is a little bit tricky. And like I said, I think the best thing to do, this is what I always do, is I hold it up to me. I've got one side of my body, front and back, and it goes like this. We haven't attached the other side yet. And then I take my pocket and I put my hand in it. If you, if you mess up the angle, don't worry about it too much, okay? There's like two different angles, but it's not that big a deal. I put it in the pants like that. And then I turn this inside out and I push the pocket back in too. And I want it to be right sides together. I want the seam allowance of the pocket and the seam allowance of the pant to be right sides together. Actually, I'm not pushing the pocket back. You gotta leave that out. There he is. Okay, so it looks like this. Pockets like that, and I'm holding this seam allowance, and I'm gonna pin it. And then I'll show you the other side. You pin the seam allowance on the other side. And I'm matching these corners where it starts. You open this up, there's on the pocket and on the pants. You want those openings to match. So I'm just sandwiching them on top of each other. So we don't put it on the inside. No, actually the pocket, this is called the pocket bag. It's actually out and I'll show you. Let me just get this going and I'll show you. It'll okay. be easier. Um, so I'm pinning only the seam allowances together. And then when I get down to the bottom here, again, there's an opening and an opening and I'm matching just the seam allowances up. I'm not gonna finish pinning here because I just wanna open it up and show you the other side. So then I just turn it over to the other side And there's the seam allowance on the other side of the pants. And this seam allowance of the pocket on this side, and I'm gonna pin that together. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this one. Okay, so when I flip the pocket over, now I have this side seam allowance and the other side of the short seam allowance. So if you're looking inside, you can see I've already pinned this one together. Now I'm gonna pin just these two layers together, this layer and this layer. Make sure you're not pinning the pocket bag or the body of the shorts. You're just pinning these little teeny seam allowances. It's two layers of fabric, no more than just these two little layers of fabric. You don't wanna be pinning the pocket bag or the body of the shorts into this. Because if you do that, then you'll be closing up the pocket. So I finished pinning that. So if I just lift up the pocket bag and turn it over, that'll be the other side is pinned. And then when I open it up like this, I have the pocket opening and it's clean. You can see the seam allowances are, are pinned. And you can put your hand in. So if I hold it up myself, 
now it's pinned in. You see, see the you pinned these seam allowances, and now I just have my pocket. And on the inside, it looks like this. So I've just mashed or sandwiched the seam allowance from the pocket to the seam allowance on the pant on each side. And now I'm gonna sew it. So this is a little tricky. <laughs> you go to the sewing machine and I'm only sewing this way first. I'm only sewing where my pins are right here. I'm gonna start right here, back stitch, and I'm only sewing those two seam allowances where I pin, exactly where I pin. I don't wanna catch the body back here and I don't wanna catch the pocket bag. So when I put it on my machine, I'm gonna get it into position. I'm gonna take my pin out. I'm gonna get it into position. And I'm gonna put my needle in, not exactly a half inch, it's more like a quarter inch because I don't wanna sew into the pocket. So stay in the seam allowance, do a quarter inch. So I put my needle in, I'm about a quarter inch out from the edge. And then the other thing I do is I go under the, I lift up the pocket bag and I grab the pocket bag right here and I pull it, I separate it. So you, there's, I open it up and I pull this out from under the needle. So I don't want to sew this pocket bag into the seam that I'm making. I wanna open this up. So I just opened up the pocket bag. I pinched this, pulled it open. I can already feel it. It's, it's um, less bulky now under the needle. I don't, all I feel are the two um, seam allowances right here. There's two seam allowance, two layers of fabric, and that's all I feel. All the pocket bag, I just pulled it out and I pushed it over here, this bumpiness. That helps a lot if you do that, because you don't want to um, catch that pocket bag. So now I just have the seam allowance and I'm gonna start sewing. And I'm only gonna do a quarter inch because I don't wanna get into pocket. And I, I make sure I'm tugging out that bag and pulling it out from underneath. I don't want it in there. Getting underneath the needle. And then I'm just sewing all the way to the end of the pocket seam allowance and back stitch. Mm -hmm. Scissors just here. Trim your threads, and then you can go check it. And turn it right side out and check it and make sure that you made. So I did okay. There's a little bit of a gap right here because I didn't get the ends of the pocket matched up all the way. I can go back and sew that a little better if I want. It looks pretty good though. So I'm just gonna go back and re-sew that closed. I didn't get close enough. Oops. 
And now I'm going to do the other side. So I've already pinned it. So I'm just flipping over the pocket bag, going to the other side, laying it flat, getting it positioned under the needle. And I'm going to lift the foot and tuck and pull the pocket bag out again on this side and just grab that and pull it out. It's not underneath. I'm gonna reposition my needle a little and then take out my pin. And I'm just sewing that quarter inch. I wanna make sure my pocket bag is pulled out of the way. Again, I'm checking. So after this step is done, the last step with the pockets is ironing them and doing the top stitch. And then it's done. So I'll just trim my thread and we'll check and see how it looks. Open it up. So it looks pretty good. Um, I did get hasty and oops, look what I did. I, I um, pleated my fabric right here. So that's something that can happen if you're not careful. So I sewed into the body of my fabric on accident. And I see where I did that. But I'm just gonna leave it for the sake of demoing to you guys how to do this, but I, I should take that out. You should, if that happens to you, you see that where it puckered right there. So if that, it might happen to you, it's really hard when you're sewing pockets for the first time to do it perfect. Just undo the stitches. You don't wanna leave it there because you won't be able to do the next step. It'll look really messy. So it's not a big deal to, you know, undo like an inch of stitching. So it took me that long just to take that out. And I just got a little hasty at the end. I was sewing too fast. I'm going to just quickly sew it back up. It won't take me that long so I can show you the last step. So now um, I took that out and it's nice and clean there. You can't see it. It's gone. Yay. So um, back to the ironing board. So this is what's really important is ironing this really well. Um, first, iron the seam open. You always want to press seams open. So I'm going back to where I sewed. And I'm going to take a drink of water while I wait for my iron to heat up. I have a few minutes left to show you guys. So I'm pressing this open. It's a little tricky, but do it because your pocket's going to lay so much better and be easier. And then I'll do this side. Okay. 
now I can turn it right side out. So now I'm going to iron from the front like that. And then actually, my whole side seam needs to be pressed open from the front, puckering and not looking flat. And it's going to be harder to do all of this. So it's always important to iron the seams open, not only from the inside, but on the front. Um, so now I'm going to press my seams that are in here on my pocket, all the one side. So right now it's open. I just pressed it open. That was to get the seam open. Now I'm going, I'm using my hand and I'm pushing that open seam closed. And I'm pushing it all away from, I'm pushing it towards the pocket, towards the interior of the pocket. It's really important that you do this because we're going to do a top stitch and we're going to catch the seam allowance in the top stitch. So I just pushed all the seam allowance to the other side and I'm pressing it over there. And Opening up the seam and giving a quick press here before I do that. So now I'm doing the other side, the same thing. So my pocket bag is facing away from me and I'm pushing the seam allowance. You can't, I'm, I have my hand underneath and I'm pushing this open seam allowance closed like this. I'm closing it up with my hand, pushing it to the side, and I want to iron it down facing that way. You're just using the iron as your tool to get that you know, pushed to the other side. And then you can even take a pin and pin it down on the other side. So a couple pins right there. I'm pinning inside the pocket. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Amy, when we push the seam to the one side, is it, do you do that the entire length of the side seam or just the pocket part? Just the pocket part. Just the pocket part. And then put the pins will help you um, do this little step. Okay, so now that's done. Now I go back to the sewing machine. And I'm going to do a top stitch. Uh, and I have this white thread. It's going to show. <laughs> oh, well. Well, it's good for you. It'll show better for you guys. Um, so I'm laying my fabric on the machine right side up. See, right side up, my pocket's showing me. And I'm gonna stitch right here along the seam here on the edge. We've done this before with the bias tape. So see where my pins are? I pinned the seam allowance underneath to the inside of the pocket. That's where I'm stitching, right next to the seam here. And what I'm doing is the top stitch is holding that seam allowance to this side of the pocket. And it's helping the pocket lay flat on the body. So I'm gonna, it's hard to get up in here. Obviously you can't get way up in here with your presser foot. So you just go as far as you can. Just get up as close as you can, back stitch a little as far as you can. And then you're gonna sew all the way down as far as you can and back stitch. And we're gonna do the same thing on both sides of the pocket. And then you're done with the pocket. You can move on to the next step, which would be doing the other side the exact same way. So I'm just trying to get up into there as far as I can. So when you do that, you don't wanna sew part of the body of the fabric either. So you have to pull, you kind of have to pull the fabric open, make sure that you're only on the pocket bag 
Are you sewing down one side of the seam that's of the pocket? Yeah. Um, okay. So it's hard to see with this fabric, but this is the seam right here. This is my body fabric. This is the pocket bag. This is the pocket bag fabric. I'm sewing right on the edge of that seam where they're connected. It's, it's a top stitch. It's something that you can see. So you want to, um, hopefully you're using that matching thread that doesn't show up. <laughs> and you want to sew as straight as you can. So um, you guys will be able, might be able to see my stitches pretty well because I'm using this white thread. Oops, sorry. So when I open it up, this is what I'm seeing. The stitching is right along this edge. Can I see what it looks like on the other side? On the other side, it's like this. So there's two stitch lines. You can see where I originally sewed the seams together and then you can also see the top stitch line. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to, that's, there's a lot of bright light in my space right now. Um, so then you go straight to the ironing board and you know any mistakes that you made here, you can kind of iron out. Um, I didn't get close enough to the seam on my stitch but it could be closer, but that's okay. So back to the ironing board. Wish I could have gotten a little closer. Pass it out. And that's gonna help hold that seam allowance inside. It's gonna help the pocket to lay flat. That's what it does. So as you can see, this is laying nice and flat and this is kind of bubbly. This side is bubbly. That's because I haven't top stitched it yet. So once I top stitch the other side, they're both gonna lay nice and flat. And I'll show you the other side, I'll top stitch the other side and then that'll be it for today. But So here's the finished, my finished short. Um, sample and here's the pocket and that top stitch right there you can see it helps the pocket bag lay flat and point inside to the um and stay inside the shorts so that's what it's doing so i'm going to go do the other side now And I make sure that the pocket bag is facing away from the um, inside of the sewing machine. And my seam allowance is, I'm making sure that it's underneath the pocket bag, not the body fabric. Just checking with my fingers, all those things.
Okay, so that's the other side. So now this pocket is done and the next step would be to do the same thing with the other side. So you take your front and back and pin the front and back together, right sides together. And uh, mark your opening for your pocket and pin it and leave the opening for your pocket. And so, that side. So I'm just going to iron this now that I have the other side done. This fabric's super unforgiving. It, um, if you press it the wrong way or <laughs> anything, it shows um, everything you do wrong. <laughs> That's why cotton is good for beginners versus um, sewing with wool. But wool and linen are fairly easy to sew too. So then you can set, press the whole thing closed like this. So now I've pressed it closed. I'm trying to get the angle right. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's nice and flat. Should be. So my pocket's right here, and it's nice and flat. Stitches are on the inside of the pocket bag. All right, you guys. So that's our um, class for today. That's our first side of the pants. So if I'm holding it up to myself, that's this side of the pants. And I have my pocket in. And remember this waistband gets folded over, right? So it's not actually starting from here, it's starting from here. So the, um, you would do both sides the exact same way. And then next week we sew the inseam together or not next week, but next time we meet. Um, we sew the inseam, that's this small portion here. And then I'll show you how to do the crotch and the waistband and then the hem. And those things are really fast and easy. It's just like with the clutch purse, the zipper um, takes longer and that was the first step. Um, once we're done putting in these pockets and sewing the side seams, the rest is really easy and basic. I know that was a lot. <laughs> pockets aren't easy. <laughs> Not these kind of pockets. I have a question about the fit. Um, uh, like I know like with the shirt that we did last time, uh, the pattern that they had, the, the fit was larger than we anticipate. Mm -hmm. Is that the same case for these shorts where the pattern may be a little larger based off of the measurements? I've made these pants a lot in several classes and for myself and my husband. So I'm pretty, um, I've experimented with the pattern <laughs> over and over. And it's a pattern that I actually tweaked myself. So 
it's pretty um pretty true to size it's not i shouldn't say true to size it's it's well vetted <laughs> okay and i mean i know that sh shirts are tricky you know it's like even if it's a baggy shirt if it's not the right kind of baggy it, do <laughs> it doesn't look good you know um but these i haven't really failed with yet on everyone that's done them um they're i'll put on these other ones so you can see what they look like i'm just gonna put them over my pants but you know they look different when they're sewn in different types of fabric so i've made i've made these pajama pants um tons of times i should say that the the pant version uh, tons of times and for my husband for me in classes with other students um the shorts are are um newer but they're pretty basic in how they fit you know it's like you can either wear them up high like this or you know you can have them lower so this is with the crotch low um, and a longer short. Um, I was gonna give you guys a shorter crotch, more of a boxer style. So these are gonna fit different because the crotch is shorter. So if I hold these up to myself, this crotch is about, is a lot shorter. So the crotch on this one you can see is like way down here. And the crotch on this one is like an inch and a half, two inches higher. And it's, so it's shorter too, more like a boxer. And that's what I intended for the class for you guys to have. Um, these are a little different. And but so, as far as um, waist measurements, because um, I think we all, like for our family, we tend to wear it closer to the belly button or lower, not like there's um, not high on the waist. So, should I actually be measuring that part and not the smallest part of the waist? Yeah, that's what I said. I said make sure when you measure your length, measure from where you where your pants sit. Okay. So, if you wear your pants up here, measure up here. If you wear them down here. Measure. okay yeah yeah for sure so but they're not going to be as baggy as the ones i tried on they're going to be um the crotch is going to it's going to be like a boxer short and these are shorts with an elastic waist so it's not like the top you know it's baggy they're it's not going to matter the size i don't think you're going to have the same disappointments is what i'm trying to say <laughs> with these um, and they're, they're going to look like boxer shorts, like the picture on the web page. So, but when you use different fabrics like me, I'm using all these funky fabrics, it, they tend to look a little slightly different. But generally, they, it's going to look baggy like this, like a boxer short. And if you get a cotton that's not as drapey as the fabric I just showed you, um that's what i've usually sewn them in i've sewn pj pants for myself and um they're they're they fit really well i mean they look great i think i made a pair for my husband we made them in the class a couple years ago but i guess you guys weren't there the pants or the shorts the pants well i made the pants yeah so Lindsay knows what they fit like well i messed up mine so. <laughs> Oh, I think the larger sizes get really baggy. I do remember that. The, the small and medium, like mine is medium. The small and medium look good. The large is really baggy. But I made a large for my husband and it looks fine on him. Um, I think it looks good on him. So, you know, I, I can't guarantee. <laughs> The fit, okay, you guys. <laughs> I want to make everyone happy. <laughs> no, 
I was just meaning like what, um, thinking of that as far as what size to get and how much I should accommodate. So, uh, cause I was thinking, I